Hi, Miss Malloy here. Next chapter of One Crazy Summer, Even the Earth is a Revolutionary. Once breakfast was over, most of the ch kids left, except for a dozen who stayed behind, including us. I told my sisters we might as well stick around for the summer camp program. Cecile had made it clear that she didn't want to see us anytime soon. So we told Sister Makumbu our names and followed her and Sister Pat, the young woman in the Cal State t-shirt, into a classroom. I felt silly and wrong calling a grown person brother so-and-so or sister such-and-such. -such. But thanks to Cecile, we now had brothers and sisters we had never laid eyes on. Sure, they said brother and sister in Brooklyn, but here it was more of a title and not like you were saying him or her. As far as I could tell, none of the grown people at the center went by Mr. or Mrs. or Miss. If Big Ma could see how quickly our home training had flown out the window, she would have had us on the next Boeing 727 back to New York. There was something welcoming about Sister Makambu, who, whom I liked right away. If Sister Makambu had met us at the airport, we would have felt welcomed as she stepped forward to claim us. She would have wrapped us up in her green, purple, and orange African print dress and begged our forgiveness for having left us. We sat at one of the two long tables. The classroom was unlike any I'd ever been in. Instead of pictures of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and President Johnson, there was a picture of Huey Newton sitting in a big wicker chair with his rifle at his side. There were other pictures of mostly black men and a few women hung up around the room. I'd expected to find Dr. Martin Luther King's photograph hanging on the wall, but I was disappointed. Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali were the only faces I could name. I didn't know any of the women, although one woman looked just like Big Ma. Next to her picture were the words, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. One of the walls were big, on, I'm sorry, on the walls were big sheets of lined ruled paper written in a teacher's knee handwriting. The first one said what we want in green letters. On the other side of the wall, another said what we believe. Vanetta didn't seem to care that we were in some sort of Black Panther, Panther summer camp, learning to become Black Panthers. Her attention was fixed on the three sisters with the flared dresses, with the flared sleeve dresses and their round curly afros. I knew I would hear all about it later, how it was time for her to have a new hairstyle and how our clothes were baby clothes. Sister Mukambu said, Hirohito Woods? A boy from the other table with the dark, spiky hair, brown, coppery skin, and slanted eyes groaned. He was probably my age. Sister Makumbu smiled in spite of his groaning. She beckoned him to her, sighed, her many bracelets jangling as she waved him forward. Hirohito will help with my demonstration. I didn't have to turn to see Vanetta's mile-long pout. It was just like Vanetta to be envious of someone else being in the spotlight. Hirohito didn't seem thrilled. He pushed his chair backwards, scraping the floor, and went sullenly up to the front. It was only from the back of his spiky head that I recognized him as the flying T-board rider who nearly mowed us down yesterday. I'd had half a mind to sock him good. Sister Makambu said, I'm going to be the sun and Hirohito will be the earth. She leaned and whispered something in his ear. He heaved a big sigh, huh, like he didn't want to do whatever she would, told him to, but would do it anyway. The sighing was for us kids, so he didn't come off as some kind of teacher's pet. Sister Makambu nodded and for, said firmly, now Hirohito. He heaved another sigh and began to turn around slowly, each time taking a step to travel around Sister Makambu, who stood still and smiled. This was better than socking him in the arm. Watching him turn around and around in his black and silver Raiders jersey, he looked down and probably felt silly. All the kids in the program, including my sisters and me, giggled. Sister Mukambu wasn't bothered by our giggling or by Hirohito's sighing. She said, the earth turns slowly on its axis while also spinning around the sun. Day wouldn't change into night if the earth didn't spin on its axis. The seasons wouldn't change if the earth didn't travel around the sun. This means vegetation wouldn't grow, which means the poor farmers couldn't harvest and the poor people couldn't eat if the earth didn't spin on its axis and travel around the sun. 
That one body spinning in motion affects everyone's lives. Does anyone know another word for the earth's constant spinning? That's how I knew Sister Makumbu was a real teacher, aside from her welcoming smile and her blackboard penmanship. She asked a teacher's type of question, the kind that says, join in. Thanks to my time spent with Miriam Webster, I had a few words in mind. Rotating, orbiting, turning, circling. I wanted to join in, but I felt silly being one of the older kids. Not as silly as Hirohito spinning around, but too old to wave my hand frantically as all the younger kids around me were doing. The older sister of the three girls also sat on her answer. She probably knew it too, but left it up to her sisters who wanted to be called on. When one of the kids called out revolving, Sister Makumbu clapped her hands. Her bangles jangled. Yes, all of your words are right, but revolving is right on. Sister Pat gave the boy a cookie. Sister Makumbu said, revolving, revolution, revolutionary, constant turning, making things change. Sister Pat said, Huey Newton is a revolutionary. Huey makes change. And Sister Makambu continued saying Che Guevara was a revolutionary. Che made change. As they named all the revolutionaries who made change, Hirohito came to a complete stop. He held out his hands, a dizzy Frankenstein, and staggered to his chair. The boy who won the cookie said, nice spinning, twinkle toes. Hirohito rested his head on the table and closed his eyes. I just thought, serves you right. Sister Makambu Announced, today we're going to be like the earth, spinning around and affecting many. Today we're going to think about our part in the revolution. Vanetta's hand shot up. I kicked her under the table, but she was determined to have everyone look at her, which meant everyone look at us. I forgot all about Hirohito and was now afraid of what Vanetta would say next. And sure enough, Vanetta said, "Uh, we didn't come for the revolution. We came for breakfast. Then Fern added, and to meet our mother in Oakland. If Hirohito's spinning made us giggle, Vanetta's declaration made everyone, except my sisters and me, and the still dizzy Hirohito, full out laugh. The group of girls whom Vanetta had been winking at were the main cacklers. Even Sister Makambu, caught off guard by Vanetta and Fern's outburst, allowed herself a chuckle. I blamed Vanetta, and not Fern since I didn't want the world to learn that we rightfully didn't know our, we didn't rightfully know our mother. Fern wouldn't have uttered a word if Vanetta hadn't raised her hand to speak. Even worse, Vanetta had thrown a king-sized monkey wrench into my plans. I had hoped to ask Sister Makambu about the name the Black Panthers called Cecile and why they called her that. I didn't ex- know exactly how I would have asked her, but something made me believe that she would know and that she wouldn't make me feel bad for asking. She certainly wouldn't have given me that, oh, you poor motherless girl pity look, or the snooty, don't you even know your own mother's name? Sister Makumbu would have given me the plain, pure, teacherly truth. Then Vanetta raised her hand and opened her mouth and had the world looking and laughing at us, except for the boy who was too dizzy to laugh. I wasn't about to add fuel to the fire by asking questions about things I should know, like my mother's name.